common problem with broadcast graphics is oversaturation. By using subtle and gentle adjustments inside of Adobe Photoshop, we can go ahead and spot and then fix oversaturation problems. If you ignore these, you can have problems with color bleed throughout your show, as well as the entire show being rejected for not being broadcast safe. Let's learn how to spot and fix these problems using Adobe Photoshop. This image is just a little too bright. Now, since I've worked with video graphics for a while, my guess is some of these very bright yellow highlights over here, as well as this red, will really be pushing it when it comes to broadcast safe graphics. We need to knock these colors down so they really fall into an acceptable range for use in television. Now, Adobe does offer a filter called the NTSC Colors Filter. However, I generally am not that satisfied with its results. Let's go ahead and choose a new image here, and I'll show you why. I'm going to draw a square here and fill it with a pure red. 255 red. Not one of the best colors for video. Option delete will fill that. Let's deselect it. Select, deselect, and we'll run a Gaussian blur filter. Let's soften that up a little bit so we have some gradation at the edges. Now, in theory, running the NTSC colors filter should go ahead and fix this overly bright area. So we'll choose filter, video, NTSC colors. However, you just notice this large zit-like spot that popped up in the middle. This is my major complaint about the NTSC colors filter. It does not have a gentle fall off. So running it on a color that's too saturated or intense can often produce a hard clipped edge or posterization as you see here. However, we can use this filter to our advantage still. Let's close this image and switch back to our problem photo. What I essentially plan on doing here is using that NTSC colors filter to test to see if there's a problem in the image. We can do this by duplicating this layer. We can simply right click and say duplicate. And then we will choose filter video NTSC colors. Now if you look closely there, there just was a shift in the image. The red here in particular jumped, but I think a few other areas were affected as well. One of the easiest ways to check is to change this layer's blending mode. If we set the top layer to difference, it will show us everything that's different between the original layer and the filtered layer. And what we have down here, if you look closely, is some area to the left where the yellow highlights on the bottle got clipped and an area here for the pile of chalk. Let's go ahead and make a fix. I will go ahead and select everything and choose Copy Merged. We can now paste this layer on top and that difference mat becomes an active selection. Let's go ahead and desaturate this layer to strip the color and then we can run a bit of a levels adjustment to really pump that up. Another way to do that is to just do a threshold adjustment and we can drag that slider to find the problem area. That works pretty well, but I'm happy with the adjustment we made there with levels. Let's just push that up a little bit more. That did a pretty good job, and I can go ahead and blur that a little bit to soften that selection. There we go. We'll just do a little bit of two-step there to push that. And what we have here is our problem areas identified. Switching to the channels palette, we can go ahead and hold down the command key on a Mac or control key on a PC and click. And it creates an active selection based upon this luminance information. Now, the entire area will not show as a selection because these marching ants only identify things that are more than 50% selected. 
Now that may be a strange concept to grasp, but essentially there can be things selected that the marching ants don't show you in their entirety. Let's switch back to levels and we'll turn these top two layers off. At this point I'm going to go ahead and add another adjustment layer. Now previously we've accessed adjustment layers from the layer menu. Layer, new adjustment layer, and picked from up here. They're also readily available at the bottom of the layers palette by clicking on this black and white icon which will allow you to create a new fill or adjustment layer. Here I will choose Hue Saturation and this will allow me to desaturate the problem area. Now if I go too far it loses all color entirely but just backing that off a bit can be useful. There we go and click OK. And what I have essentially done, if we toggle that off and on, and you look very closely, especially at the red pile of chalk, you see the difference? And over in the bottles, look at the highlights on the yellow bottles. We have been able to make a gentle selection and tone down the oversaturated areas that will cause us problems in the world of video. Now, that technique works very well, and knowing how to do that will come in handy. However, there are a lot of steps. Let's go ahead and throw these layers away, and we'll go back to our original state. And I would like to introduce the video actions. We'll cover actions much more later, but if we click on the actions icon here, it'll open up, and I've already got the video actions loaded. If they're not visible, you need to click on the submenu and choose Video Actions from the set. Let's open that up. I now need to use the Broadcast Safe Saturation action. I can go ahead and select that. And if I press Play, it will warn me that this is going to adjust the image to make it Broadcast Safe for Saturation. I can click continue and the action does everything we just did except now it's done. Now it warns you that if the layer mask on this hue saturation adjustment layer is empty that is to say filled with white then the image was already broadcast safe and you shouldn't use this action. I'll click continue but if we look closely we see there is indeed a layer mask and I could toggle that off and on. And you probably just determined that using the Broadcast Safe Saturation action is going to be much faster than manually doing all of those steps. However, I want you to actually understand what is happening there because this is a technique you can build upon in the future. Learning to use the Difference Blending Mode has lots of powerful options as you move further in depth with Adobe Photoshop.